Hey everybody, this is Dean. Uh, we have been trying for a while to get an interview with one of our new favorite YouTubers, Alice Majir. Uh, we tried it on Google Hangout, couldn't get that to work right. Then we tried to do a Skype interview and kept having technical problems with that. Finally, we got a real good recording and a real good interview, but my side of the video keeps freezing. So you have my apologies, but it's a great interview. So just forgive me if for most of this interview, all you get is this uh, silly picture of my face uh, instead of actually seeing me talking to Alice. But you'll see a little bit of me here and there. So Alice was fun to talk to. I really hope we see more of her videos in the future, and we hope you go and check her out. Okay, here we go. Interview with Alice. Hey, everybody. It's Dean Esme here, Managing Editor, Operations Manager at A Voice for Men. We have today Alice Majir. Uh, noted YouTuber who's made a big splash recently uh, in the men's rights community uh, the last three months or so. Say hi to everybody, Alice. Hello. How's it going, y'all? <laughs> that was a nice and interesting mix of, uh, of accents. <laughs> so I, I noticed you've been YouTubing for more than a year, but you only recently, maybe in the last three months, started uh, uh, doing YouTubes about gender issues and feminism and men's issues and that sort of thing. What was it that got you interested in that? Well, I've always pretty much been aware of the female privilege, at least in this country that I know of. And, you know, I had a feminist mother and watching her treat my brother the way she did, you know, I was raised kind of like, why, why is she able to get away with this? Why is there nowhere for boys to run? And so, trying to talk to other people about it, I always kept getting told that I was crazy and that I didn't know what I was talking about and that I'm too young to be thinking about this kind of stuff, you know, and, and then when I met my husband and heard his story that he told me about him not being able to see his son until he was 21, you know, I mean, that really kind of got me to like, wow, this is, this is really important, maybe I shouldn't be so silent, and he started showing me videos from Girl Writes What and Victor's In, and it got me motivated to have a voice. Um, well, you know, although it shouldn't in theory matter whether it's a man or a woman talking about these things, one of the things we found in the movement is that sometimes people will listen more to women than they will to men when they talk about these issues. I'm not sure why that is. So it's me, it's, me and my husband have actually talked about that and it seems like it's just how society has been programmed you know, and it doesn't work in this new technological age. What doesn't work? You know, viewing, viewing it to where, you know, women are listened to more because they've always been, you know, more delicate and more, you know, they, they needed more attention. But now in an age where, you know, there's not as much that needs to be done by men for women because there's all this technology, it doesn't work for women to feel so entitled without putting anything in. I can see some real choice. I can see some real truth to that. I also think men are just easily shamed into silence. Uh, I think it's 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 easy but, to dismiss that, but that they can be shamed into silence. And sometimes just hearing a woman speak of these things gives men a little more courage. Although what I'd say to my male friends is, you probably want to find the courage because the more of us who speak out, the more of us who can. Still, you know what? Women are a majority of voters in this country. Um, women are in many, many positions of power in the education system, they're uh, in, in, in media, and so women's voices are needed, you know. The black civil rights movement could not have worked if white people had just said, we don't care. Uh, the gay rights movement could not have worked at all if no straight people supported them. That could not have happened. Um, and it's the same thing here. We need women's voices. So I just want to know, let you know I really appreciate that. Uh, one of my favorite videos that you did recently, um, very powerful and moving, was called I Was Raped, where you talked about your own experience being raped. What, what prompted you to talk about that? Pretty much every time I talk to a feminist about rape culture, they always tell me that they were raped, but their story, you know, a lot of the time, I mean, some of it, it seems like this really did happen to them and it's really harsh. 
you know, kind of the way that they came out of it. But then there's so many, you know, women out there that are like, oh, I was raped and blah, blah, blah. But then they're smiling while they're saying it. And then when they start telling you that all men are terrible because they were raped, you know, and you start saying, well, I don't think so. Then they act like, well, you don't know because you haven't been there and you don't know what it's like and blah, 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 blah. You know, and it's kind of like, no, I've been there. I know what it like I know what exactly what it's like and I'm not gonna punish all men because there were a select few assholes in my own life well and in point of fact I think society is also in denial about just how many women are likely to commit some form of sexual assault we don't want to call it rape because they're using their vaginas but um, when you look at the statistics on it, it's it's amazing how much is buried when you actually look into the reports. You said that you're you you were also very moved because your brother was was molested as a child. Yeah, pretty much growing up, I I thought that it had only happened to me when I was a child. That that my older brother or half brother Chris, you know, that he'd only gotten to me and done this, and I noticed, you know, my mother knew, but she didn't want anything ever to be said about it. And she put a lock on my door, but she didn't put a lock on DJ's door, you know. And then when I found out years later that Chris did the same thing to him, I was so extremely angry. And I was angry at my mother because she knew it was going on. She knew it was happening, and she let her children get hurt because she didn't, she didn't stop it. And she had the ability to. Did you, I, I, one of the videos that appeared on recent on YouTube recently uh, was from somebody called Venerable B called Why Rape is Sincerely Hilarious. Uh, you saw that, didn't you? Yes. By a man it, who it, was... Hmm? It, it made me cry almost. It was so sad. It was sad and it was very powerful and it was very moving. And I know a lot of people are just going to look at it. It says it's written and performed by an Andrew Bailey. I'd sure like to know more about him because he tells a story about how he was raped by a woman. And a lot of people just would not take it seriously as rape because after all, he had an erection. So he must have enjoyed it, right? And no, no. If you look at the statistics, it turns out that women are far more likely to do that, commit that kind of sexual assault than people believe, a lot more likely. And... A, they get mad when you point out that this happens, or B, they try to say it's very rare, but if you look at the stats, it's not that rare. Do you find that hard to believe? You know, I know it's not that rare, because when I looked into kind of how my situation came about, you know, my older half-brother hurt me and DJ, but then he was hurt by our other step-siblings, two girls and a boy, and they were hurt by their mother, who pimped them out to her boyfriends. Oh my God! Really? Yeah, it's it's it was a really sick and twisted. I mean, like I just followed the cycle to try and figure out how it started, and it seems to me that it's just an endless cycle of abuse that keeps going down through the generations. Well, it's funny. I don't know if you've ever listened to the to the biweekly radio show I do with Aaron Pitsy, um, but we talk about that a lot, and you're talking right up her alley man she'll tell you these issues are generational issues more than they are anything else i'm going to temporarily turn my camera off because i seem to be breaking up and maybe that'll help our connection i'll just put a static image on one side see if that helps us um but anyway you can still hear me right yes excellent so you've recently started a new youtube channel right yes and tell us a little bit about that uh the rape support group I, uh, I started that pretty much to, to show, you know, everybody that everybody can be a victim of rape, whether you're a man or a woman or, you know, it, it doesn't really matter because your victimizer, your aggressor can be any gender. And it's a place for guys and girls to both come and share their stories, you know, so other people can get a broader perspective and maybe we can get some, give them some advice and some compassion in the hopes to get some healing going on. And that's that's called again what? Uh, rape Support Group. Okay. I'll make sure to put a link in the low bar to this video when I upload it so people can find that along with your Alice Majeer, um channel. Uh, and that, that I'll also make sure to put the link to that amazing performance by Andrew Bailey. Uh, I think this is very important. I try not to make issues about me and, and all that, but um, 
I experienced sexual abuse as a child from men and women, and um, I, I, I still am constantly flabbergasted when I see people in denial about women's role in all this and how likely they are to be predators. I'll be interested to see, too, what happens on your rape support group. I have seen over and over again how male rape victims get marginalized in feminist-dominated groups. You know, I'm sorry if you're a feminist and you're thinking that doesn't happen. Yeah, it does. I've seen it over and over again, um, either dismissing the male experience or making sure to make sure that man knows that his experience is unusual and in any case it's all ultimately patriarchy and toxic masculinity that causes these problems with sexual abuse and violence and that's all a bunch of bullshit if you ask me yeah i i agree i'm, I'm going to make sure though that because i want this to be a safe place and a, and a safe environment where nobody gets attacked i'm going to be going through the comments daily to make sure that there isn't anybody in there trolling and trying to trash anybody for sharing their story because i won't put up with that crap I won't do it. I, uh, you know, sometimes I object to the idea of, quote, safe spaces, um, but that's only when I see it in groups where, I don't know, they're just purely politically ideological and they're screaming trigger warning and blah, 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 and they're not really a support group. They're not being a support group or using that in a supportive way, but creating a safe space where someone can really share intimate details and not be mocked, I really commend you for doing that, and I'm glad you're doing it. Um... So I salute you for that. Um, those of us who come up from abusive backgrounds, this was something Aaron was saying to me the other day, along with we were interviewing a Dr. Nicola graham Kavan who deals with a lot of these things. And um, shoot, I forgot my train of thought. Um, it was, um, where was I going with that, Alice? <laughs> Uh, you, you were doing an interview with Aaron and, uh, oh, the, the... well, just how it's generational and you see it over and over and over and over and over again. It's a generational issue. And those of us who go with it, she was saying, tend to go either one of two ways. We either tend to become very internalized and kind of curl up into a ball and stay away from society, or we become violent ourselves. Um, and... But I, I, she also, of course, she came from a background where she was severely abused, mostly by her mother as a child, and she kind of transcended all that. She'll tell you she started out very violent and recognized that she had a problem and worked on transcending it and helping other people transcend it. So um, that, That's kind of what I hope to help accomplish, too, because I know, you know, when I was a teenager and a young adult, I was... I was really depressed and I didn't like people and I was very withdrawn and I could easily be angry. And I also had an issue with compulsive, you know, just behaviors. And after, you know, I started to look at myself a little bit more, I realized that I was turning into the same person that hurt me and I did not want to do that. You know, so I reevaluated myself and made some needed changes. That's, that's, that's awesome. And, and, but it's, it's, it's even more awesome that you tell people that because I, I, I've met people who are locked in this, this prison, this emotional prison of their childhood emotional pain, and they don't think they can come out of it, but I know that they can. Um, well, and the I, thing about it is it's always going to hurt. It's always going to hurt, but it's, it's how you focus that pain and that energy and what you put it to, you know, are you going to make a better change or are you going to continue the, the darkness that has been following you? That's right. That's right. And you can, I, I don't believe it's ever too late. I really don't believe it's ever too late. And I especially commend you for recognizing that men are human too, when it comes to these things and men have just as much needs in that area. And society still shames them for coming forward and talking about it, particularly if the perpetrator was a female which I'll repeat once again is far more common than most people want to acknowledge. So anyway, what was the first video you did on the, on, on issues like this? Um, was it that one? Thank you, man. I can't remember. Uh, no, it was actually uh, feminazis and their effects on society. I decided, <laughs> you know, that I was so tired of being quiet. It's going to come in with a loud bang. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, a lot of people don't like the word feminazi just because Rush Limbaugh came up with it and they think it means you're saying all feminists are Nazis, but... Um, th Not saying all feminists, just the majority of them. <laughs> uh, I get a little trouble sometimes with my fellow men's human rights activists just because I know not all feminists are like that. The problem is um, the ones who aren't like that don't do much of anything about the ones who are. And yeah. and they don't want to acknowledge the literally billions of dollars. I mean billions with a B from various government organizations and nonprofit foundations that um, I, I, I compare it to like being let's pretend you're a member of the Democratic Party or you're a member of the Republican Party. OK, I'm a Republican and nobody pays me to be a Republican. Therefore, Republicans don't get paid to put their message out. Yes, they do. And it's the same thing with organized feminism. You've got people in these big foundations and these big government organizations who are getting paid money to pump out false messages and make up a false crisis of men versus women. And that, to me, is where the ultimate problem lies. Um, I know I'm just pontificating, but I've also seen conservative-minded people who are the same way when, when guys are hurt. They're like, suck it up and man up, and that's just not a healthy message either, is it? No. Well, boys are always raised, you know, you, you look at how, the difference between girls and boys. Girls are the little princess. Boys are the little soldier. Girls are viewed as valuable. Boys are viewed as disposable. Um, yeah. And, you know, where even if you think that that has some sort of biological basis or biological roots, I think that can be greatly exaggerated by society. Would you agree? Yes. Yeah. Well, I think that's part of the problem with it is that they've taken, you know, just natural biological, you know, human uh, behaviors that have been developed over time given environment. And they've taken them, they've blown them completely out of proportion, you know, because now in this new day and age, things are different, you know. Ah, and I think there's something instinctive, too. We've always relied on men to protect and provide, and so we're almost uncomfortable when men start saying, hey, I'm human, too. I need protection. I need, I don't know, I'm vulnerable. And I've seen it, even out of supposedly feminist women who say they want equality, will just treat a man like total crap if he starts expressing his pain. Yeah, well, equality, you know, for feminists, equality means that they get to say whatever they want, and if you're a man, you have no voice. Um, yeah, sit down and get back to the back of the bus. Yeah. I, I noticed, it seemed like one of your most, one of your videos I appreciated the most uh, was uh, Thank You Men, and um, which was just a little short, what, maybe two-minute video, maybe not even that, but something like two minutes. Just yeah. saying nice things about men and thanking men for the good things that they've done in history. What prompted you to do that? Um, well, seeing so many videos where, you know, men are like, oh, we, we, we are so appreciative of the feminine influence and, you know, all these videos and stuff like that. And then you, you don't see a single one for men. So I was like, you know what, guys need some appreciation too. So I decided to look at kind of some of the major things in history that men have done overall to benefit humanity you know and I was just like thank you guys overall for doing this and my hopes is that it, it'll motivate you know the the younger generation to look back into history and be like look how cool we are you know kind of like a role model you know and I was really surprised that when I did put this video up I it got attacked by feminists just hardcore like they could not stand hearing anybody give appreciation to men you know no. They just, they attacked it like, well, what, if you're going to give appreciation to men, why aren't you going to give it to women and blah, 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 you know, and it's like, come on. I, I, it looked to me like you got a lot of your list from the anti misandry website. Um, I don't, is that where you got a lot of that list from? Uh, what are you talking about? Uh, there's, I, I could have sworn on that video that there was a link to a, a site called anti misandry Oh, yeah. I was looking for just inventions, you know, that, that men have invented. And I was looking for just pretty much a list of it. And so that was that was what I found. And it was a long list. I could not even try and sit and read all of that and get it done in 30 minutes. <laughs> well, I, I was impressed, A, because anti-misandry is a good site. Um, you know, it's not in a voice for you. 
sure we're a voice for men and you know we want to promote a voice for men but there's other good men sites out there too and uh, anti messengery is one of them and i think it also impressed me that oh she really has been reading she hasn't just been watching a few videos she's been reading and she's been looking at more than just one thing but um the, the feminist backlash is interesting to me they were just furious with you for saying nice things about men weren't they yes in fact to the point of uh, one of them, Ezel Basasto, she did a blog completely trashing the video, talking about how, you know, asinine it was that I would think a class of men and not think women and blah, 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 blah. And then at the end of it, she was like directing a comment towards me, like, I hope your new MRA friends don't rape you. And I was <laughs> like, how the fuck does she think that's, that is not acceptable. That is not something acceptable to say, especially over a video like that, you know. I, well, I didn't read that, and I probably won't. I'm, I'm really, really tired of it. Um, I was a victim of sexual abuse by women as a child. I have worked with a number of men who have been raped, um, sometimes by a man, sometimes by a woman. The ones who've, who've had it from a woman uh, usually have it worst of all because people just laugh at them. Um, even more than they laugh at the ones who get raped by men. But um, I, 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 I did see some men objecting to your video, just saying, why would you try and give me credit for what all these men of history did? Um, I did I did see a little bit of that. You know, I, I didn't know quite what to make of it, you know, because I, I was trying to think just the class of men for the things they've done overall, you know, and I I think some of that is still, you know, pretty valid. A lot of men go into the service to protect their countrymen, you know, and it's kind of like that should be appreciated. And, you know, if as an individual you didn't do these things, maybe you could look back on these things and be proud that another man did. Well, I'll tell you, and there's, there's, there's where I see the, the, the feminist hypocrisy anyway, because they are constantly droning on about messages about, how we're supposed to empower women and make girls feel good about being girls and champion the great things women have done through history. And that's supposed to help inspire women and girls, right? Yeah. So why aren't we allowed to help inspire boys and make boys think it's a pretty cool thing to be a boy and that they have a lot of potential and they have heroes and role models they can look back at too. What's wrong with that? It, it kind of makes me look back into just the feminized school systems, too. I mean, that's that's part of where it comes from, is that, you know, you're in the school system where every time they talk about a man in history, they talk about the wars that he committed and the, the, tr the crimes and, you know, the things that he did to his people. But then every time they talk about a female in history, it's, oh, look at how wonderful she did, and she did all these wonderful things, and blah, blah, blah. And it's kind of like, it doesn't make sense to me. No, it doesn't. And there have been some female villains in history, too, that I imagine they'd call it misogyny if you brought them up. But, uh, oh, well, I guess we can get off that. I mean, it just does seem like a lot of feminists in particular are very defensive if you have anything good to say about men. And then they'll say misandry isn't real. Well, which is it, ladies? Um, are you... Uh, are we not allowed to say good things about men? Are we not allowed to say, you know, make them feel some pride from themselves as men? Um, I don't know. It goes to this whole mentality of females have supposedly been oppressed for centuries, I guess, right? Yeah. Um, and frankly, that's a lot of bullshit, too. I don't know if you agree, but I think it's a lot of I, bullshit. I do agree. I've actually, I have had doubts that the feminist movement was ever necessary in the first place. I really, you know, I mean, from a lot of what I've been hearing, it seems like, I mean, you look at the suffragettes movement. I mean, didn't they bomb places and attack people? And I don't know I if mean, I remember any bombings, but I, I, they certainly did get pretty rowdy. And, you know, for the record, I think women had the right to vote. Um, and sometimes you do have to get rowdy, but they did some things that were very questionable, like the white feather campaign, shaming young men to go to war. Um, just because, well, I mean, it was just assumed that if, you know, if you, if you went to war, you had a right to vote. So, or, or if you could vote, you should be able to fight in war. Oh, I'm getting off track on it. I'll leave a link in the low bar for anybody who's curious about the damn white feather campaign. And a lot of those early suffragettes, most of them actually were really only interested in votes for privileged white women. 
In fact, a little secret of the of the the women's suffrage movement back in the early, in America anyway is that they threw black women under the bus. Um, black women didn't reliably have the vote in this country until the 1960s, not reliably anyway. But um, yeah, I think men have always looked out after the interests of women, and maybe that's part of what this is. You know, maybe that's part of why feminism itself seems so powerful now because when men just instinctively say well women say they're in trouble so we want to help them but in the long run doesn't that kind of infantilize women especially in the modern world yeah i i think that there there are so many women that have been raised to be you know the entitled little princess that if they don't get what they want i've seen literally grown women throw tantrums in public crying kicking legs screaming and it's kind of like how did you get to be that way? Who was it that spoiled you so much? Yeah, no kidding. No kidding. Um, well, um, was we've been going for uh, about 20 minutes now. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about? Or... Um, I can't think of nothing. <laughs> I could do a little jig. You could around. do a little jig. Well, I'll tell you, people come and go in this movement. We've seen people show up, and they make a splash for a while, and then they disappear. Um, I, I find your voice very eloquent, and I hope you do plan on sticking around. Um, we need folks like you. Oh, aren't you, aren't you working now with the Honey Badger Brigade? Yes. Uh, I've been doing a few news segments here and there, throwing them, throwing them some articles that I've written. Oh, that's cool. Excellent. If you ever have an article for voice, you want to publish on a voice for men too, let me know about that. Um, but the Honey Badger Brigade, it's honeybadgerbrigade.com, I believe. Another great site. Those those chicks are doing awesome stuff. It's it's always so cool to see women getting involved in this because it gives me hope and makes me think, wow, you know, the other half of the human race really does give a damn. So I really appreciate that. Okay, well, everybody, well, this has been a great interview with Alice Magier. Once again, check out the low bar. I'll give you the link to her channel. I will give you her link to her, the link to her Rape Support Society and to a couple of other things we've talked about. Uh, thanks a lot, Alice. I really appreciate it. Keep up the good work. Have a good one. Say bye. Bye-bye. All right. <laughs> cool.